we're going to be talking about a movie called Barbarian today. And this movie came out probably like a few weeks ago. When I watched this movie, I was actually the only person in the movie theater, which made it like a hundred times creepier. So it was kind of fun. I think it's the first time I've ever been in a movie theater all by myself, at least for a horror movie. This movie follows a girl named Tess and she rented an Airbnb because she has a job interview in this city. And she shows up at her Airbnb on a dark rainy night and realizes that somebody double booked her and another guy. And this guy's name is Keith and he was he is played by Bill Skarsgård. First she's like, okay, well, I guess I have to find a hotel. And so she's calling around trying to figure out if there's a, a hotel that she can go stay at. And that's when Keith tells her like, yeah, I think there's like a convention going on. So you're not gonna probably be able to get a motel. And so she's like, oh crap, whatever. Like, what am I gonna do? And finally he's like, you know what? You can just stay here. Like you can, you take the bed, I'll take the couch. Everything's fine. And at first she's like, eh, I don't really know about that. Cause he's like a complete stranger. But then eventually she's like, whatever. I don't really have a lot of options other than sleeping in my car. So yeah, and they talk and stuff. And you can tell that they, they kind of, you know, they kind of get along. They maybe are even like a little attracted to each other, but she goes to bed, she closes her door and she wakes up and her door is open. And she goes out into the living room to where Keith is sleeping. And she's like, did you open my door? And he's like, no, why would I open your door? And she must believe him because she just goes back to bed. So I guess she just assumed it was like a draft or something. So I guess I'd be a little more paranoid about that. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, well, then what happened? Anyway, so the next day she goes to her interview. She gets a cute little note from Keith that like says like, oh, good luck or whatnot. She goes to her interview and something kind of interesting happens after her interview. The lady asks, oh, hey, where are you staying? And Tess tells her where she's staying, what B&B, what neighborhood it's at. And the lady's like, oh, you should not stay in that neighborhood. It's a bad neighborhood. And Tess is kind of like, oh, well, it seems fine. Well, anyways, you're kind of like, why, why is she saying this? But then something, when Tess is driving back up to this Airbnb, something that she didn't notice when it was dark outside is the fact that it's, everything is run down. The only, the little Airbnb she's staying at is like pristine, but everything else is all run down. No one else is living there. There's like graffiti, all the houses are just, are completely pretty much unlivable. They're all broken down, all the windows are broken. Like it's all just, it's a very crap neighborhood, except for this little pristine house, which is kind of weird. And while she, so she gets out of her car and she's walking up to the Airbnb and this homeless guy starts running at her being like, hey girl, hey girl. And she freaks out, she gets into the house and she calls the cops and she's like, hey, like, oh my gosh, somebody was trying to attack me or something. And they're like, well, we don't have any deputies available right now. So, you know, tough luck, I guess. So she's like, okay, whatever. So I, I guess they do that. The movie does that. So you know that the cops are not an option. That's what I'm assuming. Tess can't find any toilet paper. So she's looking around and finally she goes down to the basement. She keeps the door open and she walks down the stairs into the basement to find toilet paper. And then the door closes on her. And so she's stuck in the basement. So she has to sit there and wait until Keith is going to get back to the Airbnb. And while she's in there, she notices like this little rope and she's like, Oh, what's that from? And she pulls on it and realizes it opens up this weird hidden door. And then there's like this dark, creepy tunnel in front of her. And at first she's very sensible and she's like, no, I don't think so which usually I'm fairly curious person. And I probably would be the person that would die in all the horror movies because I'm like, I need to know what that is. But in this case, there's something about it where I'm like, this isn't my house. I don't know what's down there. And it gives me this claustrophobic feel. And I just, yeah, I'd be like, nope, I'm not going down there. But yeah, curiosity gets her and she walks down the creepy, creepy tunnel and she comes to the very end of it and then she sees there's like a door to her left and she opens it up and in this little room, in this little room that's in this creepy little tunnel in a basement, there is a dirty mattress and a camcorder and a tripod. And that right there is just like a big red flag to be like, yeah, no, I'm noping the hell out of here. If I saw that, I no, 
there's never been a time where there's been a camera and a dirty mattress together like that in a little creepy hidden room and it was for anything good. So this kind of freaks her out. Well, actually, it freaks her out quite a bit. And Keith finally gets home. He opens up the basement for her. And she's like, all right, I'm out of here. I want to get out of here. Something weird is going on. And apparently, I guess she's not going to call the cops because they wouldn't come, apparently, because I think that's why they set that up in the beginning. But Keith is like, hey, hey, wait, just calm down before you go. Maybe I should go check it out. And so she props a chair in front of the door, the basement door, and he walks down there and she stays up. She stays upstairs and she's like, do you see it? And he's like, yeah. And then at one point he just stops responding. And so she's like, oh crap, now I'm going to have to go down there. So she goes down there to find him, which I'm sorry, but I don't think I would go down there. Like, obviously I'd be like, okay, either Keith is a creep or something got him because he's not answering me. And if I can take Keith out, who's like 6'1", then no, I'm not going down there. And I don't care. I guess they, they keep saying, like the cops apparently won't help because they show the cops are never helping. But eventually the cops are going to have to come at one point. Anyways, but no, she doesn't listen to reason in any way. And she ventures down into the basement. And at first she can't find him anywhere. And that's when she realizes what she thought was the very end of the tunnel. It's not actually the end of the tunnel. There's actually another secret door. So this thing just keeps going back and back. And right there, once again, I'd be like, nope, 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 nope. Like, nope, I'm not doing it. Like, I gotta go get help. But she goes, she just keeps going. She goes into the creepy dark door. And that's where I'll stop because I want to make this a spoiler free review. I also want to make just a little side note, which has nothing to do with anything and does not affect the movie at all. Except at one point, Tess looks at Keith, who's played by Bill Skarsgård. Again, remember that. Looks at his ID and it says he's 5'10". And Bill Skarsgård is not 5'10". <laughs> he's extremely tall. I said, I think I said he was 6'1", but I think he's actually taller than that. I think he might be like 6'3 or 6'4". He's a really tall guy. That's why they wanted him for Pennywise, because he's so long and gangly. All right, so when this movie first starts and the first the first part of it, it, it actually is effectively scary. I was pretty scared, especially since I was completely alone. And it, it was done really well, and there was a lot of suspense. And it, it was really creepy. I will say once you figure out what's going on, it kind of loses its creep factor, personally for me. But I will say it's still directed in a way that is effectively scary. The characters are actually pretty likable and they're all acted really, really well. The girl that plays Tess, um, she's a good actress too. And she, I mean, everybody just plays their roles the way that they should be played and everything is done very well also um justin long is in this film and justin long is he's one of those guys where or one of those actors where when i hear his name i'm like who's justin long and then when i see him i'm like oh yeah justin long and if you don't know who justin long is he played in tusk and he played in the first jeepers creepers and until this film that i started to realize you know what i don't feel like he gets enough credit he kind of always has like a certain character he plays but he's actually really good at playing it. And in this movie, he does play somebody that's a little bit of a scumbag, but he's still entertaining to watch. You still kind of like hanging out with him, if that makes any sense. So I feel like all the characters in here are done fairly well. I was a little disappointed with the ending. I was a little disappointed when I figured out what was actually going on. That's just me. That's just my that's my personal opinion. Whenever you figure out what's going on in a horror movie, I feel like the scariness always does kind of drop a little bit, you know, because now you know what's going on. Now you know what the threat level is. I don't know. I, it was fine. There's obviously some themes in here about trauma and abuse and the way that affects people. I can't, I'll probably do a spoiler review so I can't get too much into it. I will say so, personally for me, the beginning of this film, I thought was great. I thought it was 
good. I was really scared. There was times where I wanted to like close my eyes, but I won't. I promise you guys, I will never watch a horror movie and I will close my eyes. This director, I, I do look forward to watching future films, especially if he's going to do more horror because I think he does direct horror well and suspense well. So, I mean, that's a plus. I feel like this movie f falls into the same problems that Jordan Peele's movie Us fell into. And by that, I mean, I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free, but by that, I mean, there are definitely 100% themes in this film certain things that they are trying to say. The, the problem is there's a line between having a movie be like, okay, so this isn't literal, but you can see what we're trying to go for. You can see the themes. Well, that's all good and well and stuff. And sometimes it's done very well and seamlessly. Other times it kind of gets in the way of the movie. While they're pushing them, they might not make sense in the story context meaning there could be some things that just realistically it doesn't make any sense so it pulls me out of the movie for example in the movie us the idea that the government just had this underground place where there were like these tethers it was so bizarre to me and it was so unrealistic where it, it didn't make sense if i looked at it i i saw where he was coming from but just realistically, it kind of took me out of the movie because I'm like, that's just so ridiculous. Like there was just so many plot holes and I don't feel like this movie has as many plot holes, but I definitely think that sometimes it does fall into that category and it has the same set of problems. There's also a problem with, in the end, there's a scene that happens and I just think, and the whole way it's shot and the whole scene is just kind of done for kind of laughs a little bit and it's just really goofy to me and it doesn't fit the rest of the movie the tone just doesn't fit and that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit where, where i was like are we in a different movie all of a sudden i'm just not that impressed with the story i'm not impressed with the reveal of what's actually happening it's not that interesting to me even the themes aren't really that interesting to me personally but it's definitely worth a watch. I'd probably give this movie like a, like the first part I'd give like a seven and then the second part I'd give like maybe like a five or a six, if that makes sense. So let's just give it a solid six. Um, I definitely recommend watching it and I look forward to this director directing other films. All right guys, but just let me know what you guys thought. Um, if you really like this movie, if you agree with me, if you know what I'm talking about, if you'd like a spoiler review and go ahead and like and subscribe and share if you would like to see more videos coming from me. And just remember to keep watching movies, you guys, and keep being happy and I'll see you next time. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs>